I believe we are live on another Monday live. So hopefully you guys are having a good start to the week. Um, despite the weather, it's really, really windy in Luton. But hopefully it's calm where you guys are. Let me just get my message box up. One of these weeks I'll have my comment section up and run, ready and running. Right, so let's see who's here. God bless all. Let me come out of that. Oh. Right, let me get this sorted out. Right, here we go. God bless who I've not seen your name before, so welcome. Laura's here as usual. Welcome, Laura. How's your studying going, Laura? Get rid of that. So I'm my head in. Um... Again, Laura's saying hello to everyone. Stella, hello and welcome. Can't pronounce your name, so I'm not going to try, but hello and welcome. I've not seen your name before, I don't think. Um, so welcome to you guys. Oh, if you're new, um, say hi in the chat. I says welcome back. How are you? Vida, Hello. Caroline, hello. How are you doing today? Thank you for giving us the opportunity to learn properly. <laughs> uh, learning properly, that's, why, that's one way of putting it. Um, you're welcome. That's why the channel was done, to help you guys pass the fairy test as much as possible. Fahana, welcome. Emily says cheese. Welcome, Emily. Hello and welcome, Reese Harris. Again, that's a new name to me. I've not seen that name before. So welcome. Right, if you guys got any questions or anything like that, put it in the chat. Let me answer it while we are live. Amos, welcome. Portia, welcome back. Obadina, hopefully I'm saying that right. Welcome. SDK, spelling my name wrong, but I'll take it. Welcome. Henrietta, welcome. I'm doing fine. Hopefully you are well. Welcome. Emily, welcome. God, there's how much of you on there already? God, there's almost 50 of you on live already. Wow. Thank you for turning up and um, making the live what it is, to be honest, because I really do enjoy it. No problem, SDK. Got my name right. Reese, well done to you. Congratulations on passing your fairy test. Let me know, as always, in the chat what your next step is, whether it's going to be driving lessons or looking to book a driving test. Also, let me know what part of the country you're at. What part of the country you're in. DW, my initial sake, um, welcome. Chidalu, hopefully I'm saying that right, first time, welcome. Again, if you've got any questions, pull it in the chat, let me know. Um, let me know if you've got a test date as well, Trix Tinsy, welcome. How are you? You had your test last Wednesday, if I remember rightly. How did it go? Got a very test this Friday, I'm good at questions, but I'm worried to use two clips. I feel like the computer's a computer that comes back, can you help me? The computer won't recognize a pattern if you're doing a two-click method as in clicking on the problem that's a problem it won't recognize a pattern the pattern they are talking a rhythmic pattern they're talking about if it's like click one two click one two click one two click all the way through the video something along those lines but if you're doing a two-click method which should be click on the problem one two click again and then move on to the next problem it won't recognize a rhythm so you've got nothing to worry about as long as you're passing that has a perception as it is, but um, it won't recognize a method. And the question you I've got to ask, let me, sorry, let me come back to that one. Are you failing the hazard perception now or are you passing now? Because if you're passing now on the real test, you shouldn't be 
worried if that makes sense but obviously if you're if you're getting lots of zeros because you're clicking too many times or it's telling you you're clicking in the rhythm on the mock test then yes be worried but trust me if you're using the two click method on something that exists you've got nothing to worry about welcome again another new name i've not seen before patricia welcome yeah, it's really bad down here. I mean, we're actually doing a driving lesson. You can actually feel the car shake and vibrate when we're stopping at lights and stuff. It's really bad. But at least it wasn't raining. That was the main thing. Hi, Patricia. Welcome. I'm hoping that yay is a good news, yay, as in, yeah, she passed it. Right, let me, for those of you that are new, I do well. Thank you for letting me know that you've passed the theory test first and foremost. Congratulations. Let me put that back up. Um, again, let me know what your next steps are. Driving lessons or driving tests and what part of the country. I'm interested in to know now what part of the country you guys are taking your theory tests or driving lessons in because a lot of people are actually coming out of the area to take their driving tests. So I'd be interested to know what you guys are up to. Shola, welcome. Vida, unfortunately, fell more failed first time my nerves took over 42 50 hazard 58 all right has a perception got that sus 42 as much as i hate saying the word you've missed it by one which you shouldn't really say um that is a common reason for failing the theory test and the driving test because of nerves you can't let your nerves control you because um it's made you fail the test basically so what you need to do first and foremost Go through the paperwork they gave you. Um, that's the first thing you've got to tackle. Because I can guarantee you, if you've got the paperwork with you, look at it and I can tell you now that you've got five or more categories wrong. So this still shows a lack of knowledge. Whether it was nerves or not, this still shows a lack of knowledge. And then what you want to do is study, restudy those categories as well as booking another test. So hopefully the waiting time in your area is not too long. Just get on the horse and go again straight away. Troy, I'm fine. Hopefully you are well. I know what I don't know before. True. What comment was that? You will need to play nicely in the chat, boys. Uh, Alison, everyone happy to be here today. Grace, welcome. Right. Keep it coming in the chat. I'm going to keep an eye on it. But before we go any further, I just want to, the new guys, um, the way it works is I tend to do an overview of the theory test. Never assume that you guys know how that works. And then we do a 20 question mock test where you pull it in the chat, the answer. So the number and the letter. So first and foremost, let me just do the overview. So if you didn't know, it's a multiple choice, 50 questions. The 50 questions is made up of 14 different categories. And that's why I always say study the categories individually and then work up to a 50 question mock test because you don't know how many questions are gonna come from what particular category. So your knowledge across the categories need to be strong to be fair. And then once you've done the 50, sorry, once you've done, the time you have to do the 50 questions is 57 minutes and you have to get 43 out of 50 and obviously it's multiple choice on that one once you've done the 50th question you click finish it gives you a three minute break if you decide to take it not a three minute break to get up and walk around and chill out just to stay at the computer and chill my advice for you guys doing the theory test is take the three minutes so you can switch off from questions and get your mind mentally ready for the hazard perception the has perception is 14 videos that last for about 45 seconds to a minute and it's 14 of them one of them has a double hazard so you can score a maximum of 10 two, um, two fives and the 13 others have single fives you need to average at least a three across the board 
to get 44. If your average is less than three, you're gonna fail the test. So you have to average three or more. If you do get a zero, you can still pass. Obviously, it just means getting more fours and fives to bring the average up. There are no trick questions. The fairy test is just written and worded badly. So sometimes um, it sounds like a trick question. I had that this morning in the classroom where it's just written badly, worded badly. So it comes across like a trick question, but there's no tricks. The fairy test is black and white. Safety, 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 or a controlled outcome, which is normally your um, first aid questions or motorway questions lead to a controlled outcome. And the most important thing about the theory test is, well, don't overthink it. It's not personal. It's a generic test. So it's going to be a generic answer. So don't overthink it. Don't add stuff into the question. Don't take stuff out of the question. And that way you should be okay. So let me just quickly go back to the chat. Wrong one. Videos helping me a lot for my test preparation on the 17th coming Friday. Your advice I need. What Farhan, you gotta tell me what advice you're looking for. Is it on the questions or general or has perception? Just type it in the chat. Well done for passing 45 out of 50, 60 out of 75 is a decent score. Um, well done and thank you for coming back and letting me know. Again, please in the chat, let me know what your next step is. Driving lessons, driving tests, and what part of the country are you looking to take your lessons and tests? Yeah, one thing I will say about the questions as well, because um, some of you guys are still... <clears throat> sorry. Some of you guys are still taking the, or using the apps. That's the best way of doing it. Some of you are using the apps, passing the mock test on the apps and going into the, um, the real test, believing the questions on the apps are the same question in the real test. I will add whatever app that you use, it's sampled question. Nobody knows what the real questions are. Even I don't, I've been doing this for eight years. I, we get feedback from our pupils of what questions came up but they don't give us the exact wording. So that's roughly why I know what the questions are, but not the exact wording. But it doesn't matter. You're still choosing the safe option. It doesn't make a difference how it's worded. It's still gonna be a safe option or a safe outcome, a controlled outcome. So that shouldn't really throw you. In terms of flagging the question, the only reason why I suggest flagging the question, if you're not sure what the answer is, flag it, move on because sometimes you get a similar question further down the line that can jog your memory, you can go back and change it. Also, by flagging, you're gonna go back to the questions that you wasn't sure of. You, what you don't want to do is go from the, answering the 50th question, go back to number one and double check all 50. Your mind's gonna do overtime, it's gonna make you change some right answers to wrong answers. That's why you flag and only go back to the flagged ones. If you are happy with what you've done, you don't need to flag any. So flagging is only if you've got doubts about whatever it is that you need to answer the questions on. My son's going okay, but I've not found... I'm assuming that you mean instructor. I'm assuming you mean instructor on that, um, Laura. Gas for clutch, all the steering, God bless you. Um, clutch, I, it's hard to explain that. Clutch, you just bring up slowly. I can't stress, from the examiner's point of view anyway, for a driving test, all you want to do with the clutch is, sorry, move off. The examiner wants you to move off first time safely, not first time quickly. So take your time with the clutch. Most people that struggle with the clutch is because they're worried about the person behind holding them up delaying or the worst thought going through your mind at that point in time is stalling the car. That's the reason why you, most people struggle with the clutch. You need to sort everybody else when you're out there driving, you're learning to drive, take your time with the clutch. And the other little tip I can give you with the clutch, treat it as two parts. From the floor to the bike is one, 
get and then keep your feet still while the car moves a little bit and then slowly from that point upwards so from the floor to the bike is one stage and then from the bike all the way up a second stage treat as two parts steering that's just practice please help i want got made that a little bit clearer in saying that before we go any further um Scotland. There's been quite a few on here that's passed in, in terms of driving tests as well. Scotland, Glasgow, Edinburgh. I think Scotland's probably one of the most popular places. Oh, I was struck with that considering the answers you gave last week. What score did you get? Yeah, once you understand what you're looking for in a hazard perception, it does become easy. In my class, I've not had someone fail a hazard perception in about four years. Um, in terms of that, but the questions, you just don't know what 50 questions you're going to get. That's why it's the hardest part. But once you fully understand what you're looking for, um, the hazard perception becomes easier. But that's what the mock is for. You guys are always doing the mock to look to pass it every time. The mock is about learning from mistakes. Blessings, welcome. Um, my mind is Sunday, please help me. You've got to make this thing clear. With my mind is Sunday. Do you mean your test is Sunday and you want help? If that's what you mean. And what help do you need? You need to let me know what help you want. Hoping to book my first test December. Okay, why are you hoping? Why don't you just book it? There's a question. We're in November now. Um, you can book it any part of December, beginning, middle, end. So why are you hoping to book it? Why, what's stopping you from booking it? I'm good. Long time no see or hear from you. How's the driving going? Right, before I go any further, let me just do say something, because the video's coming out Friday. Um... No, videos coming out Thursday. I normally release my videos Thursday. Right, I am looking for volunteers. For those of you that are looking for help who's not got a test booked anytime soon, I'm looking for volunteers for the channel. What this gonna, what the volunteer is going to do is come on the channel and be recorded. While you be recorded, it's not live, by the way, it's going to go as a video. So what I'm looking for is volunteers who's struggling to pass their theory test who's willing to come on the channel and be filmed in a short interview where I just ask you about your struggles, what you like about the theaters, what you don't like, what you find hard, whatever it happens to be, why are you suddenly at that point in time? You can ask me questions as well, so it's back and forth. And once you've done that, we'll do a 20 question mock test and you'll answer the 20 questions. And once the 20 question mock test is done, I will go through all the obviously wrong answers to show you your weaknesses. I'll go through the right answers to show you your strengths. And I will help you give advice and coach. That's what I'm looking for. But you have to be willing to be filmed for it to go out on YouTube. Once it's been filmed, I'm going to register you on my software that I use for coaching outside of the course and the lives. So I can monitor your progress in terms of mock tests, any categories you did. So I know how much, how long you've logged on for, how long you took, questions you got right. And I can send you messages directly and coach you. So I'm going to be coaching you if you're willing to come on the channel from start to finish until you pass your theory test. There will also be ongoing support in Discord. I'm going to set up a special room. Only the guys who come on the channel to get filmed will have access to that room where you can ask any questions. If I have to go in there and do some live training, I will do that as well. So that's what I'm looking for. So if you're interested in doing that, and you're not in Discord. Um, so if you are in Discord, you can send me a message in Discord to say you're interested. I'll take your details down and register that. And if you're not in Discord and you're not willing to join Discord, it's not a problem. You can hit me up on email, which is info at drivingtheoryuk.com. So it's the channel name, info at drivingtheoryuk. If you're going to send me an email, what I need from you is your full name, first name, surname, your little bit about your fairy chest history as well, especially if you're taking it two or three times or more. 
and I need a reason why you need my help. Don't just send me an email, I need help, because they ain't gonna say, I'm not even gonna re respond to that. Believe it or not, I get a lot of emails from you guys just saying, I need help. I don't even respond to those because it doesn't make sense. I don't know what you want help with. So if you're gonna take time out to send me an email, send me a reason on why you need help. So if you're willing to be filmed, for a series I'm doing next year to help more people pass, then let me know. But obviously, if you know people who's willing to be filmed, then pass this on to them. Also, I will add as well, if you have already passed your theory test and willing to come on and discuss your experiences as well to help other people, especially if you use this channel to help you pass, again, I'm interested in that as well. So people who haven't passed and people who have passed I want your experiences because I'm looking to help as many of you guys pass your fairy test next year. So that is what I'm looking for. A video is going to come out and explain that a lot more next, um, hopefully Thursday. I'm getting, don't know what that means. Got to make it a little bit clearer. Booking my practical next week. Uh, were you looking to book it? Because obviously you're in... Tottenham, Wood Green, I can't remember where you was, but I know your local centre is Wood Green or Tottenham. Which one, if you're going to use one of those? Bromley Borough. Okay, God bless all. Um, I'm glad it's all working out for you and you're doing, for me, the right way where you're doing the ferry and driving together because they go both hand in hand. So, um, yeah, if you've got any questions, let me know. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm still going to go through your... I'm still going to go through your comments, but I'm going to start the theory test. Frederick, I wish you luck with that. Right, so, <clears throat> for those of you that are new, let me quickly go through how this works. 20 question mock tests, we go through one by one. So we read the question first, my suggestion to, not just for this, for when you are studying, read the question, look at the images, and then go for the answers. So which of these signs warns you of a zebra crossing? So A, B, C, or D. Sorry, let me just get my mouse up so you can see clearly. Yeah, hopefully you can see that. So A, B, C, or D and go for your options. So what I'm looking for you to do in the chat is put one, if you think it's one C, for example, you put one C because there's a delay between me, YouTube, and you. So I'm gonna make sure we're always on the same question because some of you got a lag on your connections. So first question is put it in the chat, one A, one B, one C, one D, whatever you think is correct. What's that about? Um, SDK extremely windy here in Manchester too. Yeah, weather's awful. I'm a bit Bahana. I'm a bit worried because I'm practicing with smart phone and on the test and to what kind of screen am I going to start that has perception? Um, if you're practicing on the smartphone, it doesn't really matter because if you're passing the smartphone, you're going to... Put it this way, if you can pass on a smartphone in terms of hazard perception, you can pass on a real test. The real test, the real test is a computer monitor, so it's a bigger screen, and their app is slightly slower than the real app, if that makes sense. So if you're passing on the phone, you've got no problems. If you're failing on the phone, then I would suggest try to get to a tablet or a desktop. For some reason, my comments are kind of really small. Um, ND, I live in England. Right, let me um, see if these ones are coming through. All 
Right, for some reason, my comments are coming through small. Um, right, Caroline's got 1A, Simply Me, 1A, Assess, 1A, Belly Valence, I feel it's on the time, 1A. Right, most of you gone for 1A. And there's no difference of opinion on that. I asked the question, which of these signs warns about zebra? Yeah. With images, you've always got to imagine you're going from top to bottom. So it's going to be um, A on this one. Where would you see this sign? A, B, C or D? Comments are so small. Uh, I had a bit late, I had a couple of things to do. Not a problem you're here now, which is the main thing. So I'm just going to read that again. Um, one of... Ugh. One of the questions said, if you're following a long vehicle, it turns left. At junction, where do you expect the trailer to go? My answer was to the right side. Please, can you just say yes? Correct, it goes on the right side. We drive on the left, it's a long vehicle, so when it comes that it's got to come up on the wrong side of the road, so it's going to be the right hand side. So, that answer is correct. I'm assuming you mean puddle. Yes, it's a possible hazard because, right, the hazard perception is anything that's going to cause you to slow down or change direction. So if you're, in, if you're approaching a puddle, technically you're going to go left or right to avoid the splash or you're going to go slowly to drive through it. So technically, yes, it's a hazard because you now got to click. So if you were driving in real life for the puddle, if you're going to shift to the right, be main mirror, right door mirror. If you're going to shift to the left, main mirror, left door mirror. If you're going to slow down before going through the policy, so don't splash. It's just going to be main mirror. So technically you checking the mirrors is the click. So hopefully that makes sense. Right, what number are we on two? Let me see if the twos are coming through. All right, first one. Uh, Grace to C, difference of opinion straight away. I've got 2C, 2B, 2B, 2B. Time to out, school bus. Someone's got a free C there. We're not on free yet. I'm assuming that's 2C. Hold a minute. You guys have got A, Bs and Cs. A, near a school crossing. B, a pedestrian only area. C, the answer C. It's a school bus. Harriet, welcome. It's a school bus. You won't see near a school crossing and at a pedestrian only area. Definitely not. Oh, you can see that. What does a rumble device design to do? That's really badly. What's a rumble device designed to do? Um, if you didn't know, rumble device is the yellow lines. Otherwise known as a rumble strip. Again, just type in the chat what you think it is while I catch up with the comments.
Yeah, as I keep saying, the questions are sampled questions, but even though it's worded differently, you should be able to calculate the safe option. And that's why we did the test last week when I worded it differently to test you guys' knowledge as well, because some of you will go for the bog standard mock test answer rather than thinking, right, hold on a minute, which one's the safest answer? I didn't see the comment, but all you've got to do is try to ignore people. You do get some people who just, oops, let me shorten this down. Um, stupid or ignorant, just try to ignore it. So I apologise for that. One side B, thank you. I passed my theory test two weeks ago. Forty five percent of perception got forty nine. Congratulations on passing and thank you for coming back to let me know. Again, as I keep saying, let me know what your next step is on your journey, whether it's going to be driving lessons, driving test, or yes, only driving lessons, driving test. And let me know what part of the country you're in. No problem, you're passing, so it's helping, that's why I do it, it's to help you guys pass. So you've got the benefit from it, so yeah, appreciate it. Just started applying for a provision license to start lessons and your videos have been really helpful. Going to start less learning all of the knowledge. Yeah, so once you get your license, you'll be, as long as you keep practicing, you're good to go. Get the license, dive straight into the ferry, and obviously start your driving lessons. What number one free? Let me get some of these frees up if they come through. Still two's coming through. Here we go. The first one's out. Free D. All right, most of you are going for. Yeah, most of you are going for um, these. Let's make sure no one's going for anything different. Yeah, all of you are going for these. Uh, alert you to your hazard. What they, just in case you don't know what rumble strip is, the, the yellow markings on the floor is painting slightly higher than the tarmac. So when your car goes over, it rumbles. And obviously if it's a smooth rumble, your speed's correct. If it's a violent rumble, then obviously you're too fast and approach to the problem. So that's what it is. Who should obey the diamond-shaped traffic sign? So who should obey this? Again, A, B, C, or D. Ace, congratulations, not something I recommend, um, basically last minute binging, but well done for passing and thank you for letting me know. And again, please let me know what your next steps are, driving lesson, driving test, and what part of the country you're looking to take your driving test itself. Nerves is not a bad thing, just control the nerves. Um, I've said it before on here, when my pupils are taking the theory tests or driving tests, if they say to me they're not nervous, it makes me nervous because you do need the adrenaline to keep you focused. Just don't let the nerves control you. And if you feel that you're losing it, take a step back, take some deep breaths and then go again. And what are we on four? Congratulations, Chris. All 
Right, let me see if the fours are coming through. Right, here we go, first one. D. D, most of you, again, most of you are going for Ds. I don't see, oh, we have got difference of opinion. Good win, welcome back. Why right, the answer is trams. Yeah, the answer is trams. Um, it's not red and white sign, it's not red and white, it's not blue and white. So the only one it can be is trams. All the rest are proper road users, if that makes sense. That's how you can work that, out, work that one out. What can you do to reduce environmental damage caused by your vehicle? So what can you do? Again, A, B, C, or D. Yes, it would. If you're willing to come on and um, drop me an email, I've got a couple lined up um, as well in terms of being autistic. But yes, it's nice to have your guys' point of view, especially if you've got a learning disability. I've got one, my people this week that I've got personally this week in my car, he's got ADHD. Um, and it's making it a little bit difficult for him to drive. So it's interesting to see you guys with learning disabilities. If you're willing to come on the channel, Trust me, I would love to be able to interview and put you out there as ins inspiration and motivation because I've got the most respect for you guys to actually come on a course, first of all. Um, I'm talking about from my personal point of view, coming to my courses to do it because in a, in a classroom environment when you've got a learning disability, it's not easy, first and foremost, and persevering. So yeah, if simply me, if you want to come on, drop me an email, I would love to have you on, trust me. As long as you don't shout real in, in my headphones. Uh, five. Oh, they're coming through. Oh, Cambridge. It's interesting. With all the cyclists down there. Marion, welcome. You are here. Appreciate that. Five, 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 there we go. So again, most of you are going for five, D. Got two Patricias. I right, must have you gone for... D, they don't say difference of opinion. Um, D, 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 what can you do to reduce the amount of damage by your vehicle? Avoid making lots of short journeys. Yeah, avoid making lots of short journeys. In other words, if you're going to the local shop, either walk or cycle is what they're trying to say with that. What hazards should you be aware of when traveling along this street? Remember, look at the image first, because you can pick up clues sometimes, and then go to your options. So what hazards should you be aware of? Um, busy Lizzie, how are you doing? Practical test this week, wow. Um, you only passed your theory test not too long ago. Well done to you. Whereabouts are you taking your test? Which test centre? Still love to have you on. What you can do, send me an email 
we can record it and I can send you a copy of the edited version if you want before it goes out and then you can say to me yeah let it go or don't let it go like I said I would love to have people with learning disabilities on because I find you guys an inspiration trust me so if you're willing to come on I'll still film it and I will send you the edited version before it goes out on YouTube I can always adjust the volume, not a problem. Six, right, here's the first one. Six A, A. Okay, most of you are going for A's. What are you going for? A, I don't see a difference of opinion that one has a should you be a what should you be aware of children running up between parked cars? Um Glare from Sun, large good vehicles. Yeah, children running out between cars is the correct answer. You're on a smart motorway. What does it mean if a red cross is shown above the hard shoulder and mandatory speed limits above all other lanes? So again, A, B, C's or D's. That's all right, not a problem. We can always edit that out anyway. Bleep it out. You're in Palmer's Green. Wow. That was just literally up the road from where I was running our branch in North London. Um, Winchmore Hill. So your nearest test centre would be Tottenham or Wood Green. Where are you taking your test? And have you dealt with the um, Great Cambridge Roundabout? My practical test 15th of November in Birmingham. Prince, I wish you luck with that. That's as in this week, right? 13, 14, 15, Wednesday. I wish you luck with that, Prince. Hopefully, hopefully you do well. Seven. I'm skipping past the seven like I... Ugh. Uh, right, here we go. Seven. Again, most of you are going for Bs. Oh, got a D there. Raj. God bless all, you've only got a C on that. I'm assuming that's the one we're on, 7C. Right, some of you have gone for B's and C's. Let's just read the question You're in a smart model way. What should, does it mean? Blah, blah, blah. X. And B's and C's. What's B? The hard shot is for emergency or breakdown use only. That sounds good. And C was hard shot. It can be used as normal. It can't be. It's got no 50. If it's an X above the hard shoulder, it's a for uh, literally what it says here emergencies or breakdowns. So you can only use these three lanes. If it had a 50 over the hard shoulder, it means you can use it as a running lane. An X is no, 50 is yes. What does this sign mean? Again, two arrows going up, arrow going down. What does it mean? So you guys, Palmer's Green and um, like I said, you've got the choice of two test centres, Wood Green and 
Tottenham, the test routes actually kind of interlink as well, so the roads aren't much different. So the advantage with the good thing about, um, I don't know if it's a good thing, but um, one of the main things with Tottenham and Wood Green, you've got a lot of 20 zones down there. So it's, you've got to be disciplined to keep that speed, especially if you come off the dual carriageway doing 40, 50 miles an hour and then having to go in the 20 zone. That's what you, where you've got to be really disciplined. Um, I prefer that I can handle any roundabout, any tips or what great can you? Yeah, for the, um, not fairy test, for the driving test, C as sections. Let me just quickly explain what I mean by that. Let me come out of that. Sorry for those of you still doing that question. Um, with the driving test, it's roughly going to, they're going to quote you 38 to 40 minutes to test last for. You're going to get pulled up on the left a minimum of four times, which is uphill, downhill, level gradient, angle start. The examiners know the test is stressful, so they're going to get you to pull up on the left four times. And it's roughly about 10 to 12 minutes each time. Every time you pull up on the left, go handbrake, neutral. Take your feet off the pedals and chill for a bit. They're going to say to you, drive on when you're ready. It is when you're ready. Take deep breaths. If you're taking water with you, have a sip of water at that point in time. And then, and only then, when you're ready, get the car prepped. What they're looking for when you go to drive off is blind spot checks. I can't stress that enough, is your blind spots. Because if the car's not prepped, you're going nowhere anyway, so you can't fail for that. But you will fail for moving off on blind spots. If you think you've made a mistake, keep going. Try to blank it out, because you don't know what that mistake is, whether it's going to be a minor, serious or dangerous. The only way you're going to know for sure if you've messed up is if the examiner grabs the steering wheel, goes for the foot brake or helps you verbally. Because he's helped you drive, he will fail you for that. But outside of that, you don't know. So just literally keep going whether you made a mistake or not. Because I've been on so many driving tests where I thought the pupils failed and examiners passed them. And I've just said to myself, wow, I can't believe you passed the person for doing that. It's not about what you think, it's about what they think. And the test is just another driving lesson with a stranger, believe it or not. So hopefully that helps you out. But just keep taking deep breaths and every opportunity you get, try to chill and don't take risk. It's no point. They're not looking for you to do what normal drivers can do. They're looking for you to be a learner driver, showing that you can be safe. Right, a difference of opinion here, 8C from Harriet, 8B from Patricia. I even got a D. Right, so... B, C, D, C. C, I got a D. The majority seems like C's and D's. Right, the question, what does this sign mean? C's and D's, you guys went for contraflow. With flow. Right, it's contra. For driving, contra means going against the flow of traffic. So you're going up. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. Remember, with images, you're always going up. So you're on the one-way street going up, and the bus is on the one-way street going down. So it's contra flow. If there was no arrow on the bus, that was all gone. It's with flow. So no arrow with the bus is with flow. Arrow with the bus is contra flow. When may you enter the box junction? They're talking about the yellow markings on the floor. It's called a, a yellow box junction. When may you enter a box junction? Twenty ninth of November, Birmingham, Fay. Uh, thirteen, twenty, twenty seven, twenty twenty seven. We've got about two weeks left. So that's a couple of lives, so you can always turn up on the lives. If you've got any questions just while you're studying, jot them down. Bring it on the next live. Pull it in the chat. Let me help you out, and hopefully we get that passed for the twenty ninth of November. But good luck with it. If I don't see you on the lives.
Yeah, you've got to be careful with wood grain. They're pretty hot on speed for the simple reason, like I said, 20 miles an hour. Um, and like I said, some of the test routes will take you onto the dual carriageway, um, coming back down towards Green Lane. Depends which doesn't you're going to, by the way. If it's wood green, you're on the Great Cambridge, do a left, 40, sorry, 40 miles an hour. And then obviously you're coming back onto Green Lanes on the back roads doing 20 miles an hour. So you've got to be disciplined with your speed. You have to be. They would allow you one to two over as long as you recognize that and bring it down quick enough. But if you're driving everywhere one or two miles over, you're going to fail for your test. But going over is not a massive deal as long as you spot it and bring it down quick enough. Right, um, again, we've got nines, A's, most of them are A's. I think most of you are going for A's on this one. Laura, your internet's keeping up this time. All right, let's see what A is when your exit road is clear. Oops, when traffic signs direct you, when there are fewer than two vehicles, when signal by another road user. Yeah, with the yellow junction box, I think I've done a video on this as well. The full answer, the only time you can go into the yellow junction box is when turning right, prevented by oncoming traffic and your exit's clear. So what I just said, they can use any part of that in a real test. So when turning right, prevented by oncoming traffic and your exit is clear. Which light should you use when driving in the tunnel? If you watch my lights videos you, or, or other videos with bad lights, you, this is really easy. If you haven't watched it, then. Mm. No, no, welcome. Long time no see. John's Lee. Um, Congratulations on passing and thank you very much for coming back and letting us know how you got on. Again, um, before you sign off, let me know what your next steps are, whether it's a driving lesson or driving test. And what part of the country you're looking to take your driving test. No problem, Vida. Oh, they're coming through already. Ten's coming through. Uh, right, got A. And most of you are going for A's. No one's going for anything else. Let me just make sure. Yeah, most of you are going for A's, which is the correct answer. I uh, always say if it's a bog standard question about lights, it's always going to be dipped headlights or just headlights. They can drop the dip sometimes, so it makes it look like it's a different light. Bulk standard question is going to be um, dipped headlights. If it's any other lights, they will pull it in the question, i.e. you are driving in fog. Which light should you use? Then you know it's going to be fog lights. What will happen to your car when you drive up a steep hill? So you're going up a steep hill. Kevin, welcome. I got my favorite test. Good luck with it. Again, if you've got any questions that you feel like you're struggling with or anything you want cleared up, pull it in the chat before we sign off and I can help you out and hopefully we get that pass for you tomorrow. But also, um, Kevin, come back next week and let us know how you got on. First one that is Caroline B. Depends of opinion, Grace A. Hey. 
What do you mean by road signs? <laughs> Is it shapes or road signs in general? Uh, again, my, ooh, difference of opinion. I had an A and I got Bs and I got Cs. Most of you are going for Bs. How are you? Put, I'm assuming you mean 11B. Right, what would happen? Angie's going to work harder. If you're going to think about yourself walking up a steep hill, if you go up a steep hill or flight of stairs, you're going to feel tired because you're working harder. It's no different from a car. If a car's going up a steep hill, the engine is working harder. Why is it a good idea to plan your journey to avoid busy times? So why is it a good idea? Um, instructors are busy. Um, my advice is to Google, ask friends, and go to your test center. There's a coordinate test center down there, and go to them at source. So go to the test center and talk to the instructors down there, especially if they had a test pass. They obviously got a blank space. They may be able to fit you in, so you jump in the queue in that sense. So if you can't Google, and find someone if your friends have got no recommendations because sometimes instructors like to work off recommendations rather than joe blogs if that makes sense and otherwise go to the test center itself stay down there for about half hour 40 minutes as instructors come and go and just ask them if they can fit you in if especially if they had a test pass and go down that way but yeah finding instructors are hard The working harder one, Vida. All you got to try and do, sometimes think about the you. In certain situations, you can put yourself in a similar situation. That's why I was trying to say to you, I don't know if you was here last week when we done the fairy test and I worded differently. So what if you are walking up a steep hill, how would you feel? You're going to feel tired. You're feeling tired because you're working harder. That's the answer for the car. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes you guys got to understand what they're asking so you can put yourself in a similar situation if the question allows you to. And that's the reason why when I said the questions were different in the real test, if you fully understand what they're asking, you can still figure it out. But when you just learn answer, sorry, question, theory test answer, you go in there, you're going to get thrown because it's worded differently, so it throws you off straight away. 12. Oh, is the first one, right? Tamzid, not seen your name before, so welcome to you. So we've got 12 C's along the way. Yeah, most of you are going for 12, 12. Most of you are going for C's. Uh, why is it good as a plan to C? You'll have an easier journey. Yeah, if you plan your journey, it's got easier. You know with the traffic car, traffic jams, temporary traffic lights, blah, blah, blah. Um, it just makes your life a lot easier if you plan it out. When could the cost of your insurance be reduced? So when could it be um, reduced? Yes, I'm interested in both points of view, past and not even taken it yet, whether it's past it, failed it, or haven't taken it yet because like I said you all go through the same emotion so it's good to know what you would have went through especially with a learning disability so yes I'm interested and that all I want to know is, is basically log 
anyone's experience of learning the theory test, the trials and tribulations, so it inspires others to make them feel they're not alone on the same journey you guys are going through. Because you all go through the same emotion, nerves, don't think I can pass, I don't get it, don't understand it, I'm alone, blah, blah, blah. You all go through the same thing. And I want as many of you guys to pass come next year. 13. Right, here we go. 13A, got 13B, difference of opinion straight away, A. A, A. Right, again, most of you, some of you putting A's in there, I'm not sure what question that's related to. Please put the question number and then the letter. Right, most of you gone for A's. Where would the cost when you complete pass plus? Yeah, Pass Plus is a course that you take after you've passed your driving test. There's no um, test at the end of it. It's just literally, it should be six hours as long as you reach the standard. Um, and it definitely should incorporate motorway driving, nighttime driving, adverse weather driving. And because it makes you a better driver, some insurance companies reduce your insurance because you're less risk of having an accident. When would you use the right-hand lane of a two-lane dual carriageway? So when would you use the right-hand lane? Thank you very much, I appreciate that. Beloved, um, thank you again for coming back and letting me know that you've passed your test. Again, let me know what your next steps are, please. I'm not understanding what this what word is. Um, thank you for getting us back on. Help, oh, thank you for struggling with me. I'm not sure what that word M is. Um, yeah, make that clear so I know exactly what you're talking about. But if you're talking about the neutral question, I'm assuming you're talking about clutch control and coasting. Um, just confirm that in the chat for me. Is it Karima? Just clarify what it is that you're asking. I can give you that tip on that. Subscribe. That is just um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just click on the, the subscribe button, notification bell. But if you keep the channel name as save as your favorite, just go in there anytime our videos get released every Thursday and I do a live every Monday. In terms of my classes, that is run as a part of intensive course. It's not an individual theory test course. Part of the intensive course is the theory side of it. So we're helping to pass the theory. Do the drive-in straight after the theory side of it and hopefully within a week or two weeks or so they can book and pass their drive-in test. Okay, brilliant. Um, 14, let me catch up with the... Marks, right, there we go. C. Looks like most of you are going for C's on this. I don't see. Vida, you just put 14, no number. Or letter, should I say. 
But most if you're going for C's, when would you use the right hand of a Julian encourage way when when you're C, so I'm reading D. When you're turning right or overtaking, yes, it's correct. C. Um, just to explain, dual carriage ways for turning, overtaking, and turning right. If it's a motorway question, it's just for overtaking because you can't turn right on the motorway. What should you do if your vehicle breaks down in a tunnel? What should you do? Don't know about that, but I just give the information, you got to take it in, absorb it, you're the one taking the test. So I just give out the information so you have put some work in to achieve your pass. I can't take all the credit, but thank you anyway, I appreciate it. What's the speed limit on the dual carriageway outside the built up area? That's question is a don't know answer because you've got here what is the speed limit on the dual carriageway outside the built-up area built-up area is 30 miles now a dual carriageway <clears throat> could be any speed the maximum is 17 it could be any speed for example my pupil today went on the dual carriageway is 20 miles an hour in that particular area in newton on a dual carriageway if you ask him what the national speed limit is on the dual carriage, right, that's a different question. And that's 70 miles an hour for a car driver, 60 for heavy goods and towing vehicles. But it could be any speed limit outside of a built up area because a dual carriageway doesn't have a, doesn't have a set speed limit unless it's national. So hopefully that answers your question or clears it up anyway. 15 and the first one's through. Again, okay, most of you seem on first glance going for D's. But I don't see anything different. Right. Um, Standing alone behind, stay in your vehicle, stand in front, switch on the hazard. Yeah, switch on the hazard warning lights. You've broken down, so you're a hazard. Switch on the hazard warning lights. That's the link, basically. Hazard warning lights, you've broken down. And then go and call for help. Never stay in your car, because someone goes in the back of you, you're going to get neck injuries or whiplash. Where may you overtake on a one-way street? So where may you overtake on a one-way street? 16... come through yet there we go first ones 16 d's well, mo most of you gone for d's um it's a one-way street, you can pass left, right, centre, it makes no difference because you're all going in the same direction. So that's the safest option on that one. You're at an incident, what could you do to help an unconscious casualty? What could you do to help? Right, some of you went for C on that on the last one I even got a B in. 
Right, remember, if you've got any questions, put it in the chat before we sign off. And I can try and help you, especially if you've got a test coming up in this week or next week. Oh, these ones come through quicker. Um, right, 17. The, well, I've got B's and C's. Right, uh, right, it's B's and C's. Question your incident, what can you do? B, what was B? Check that they're breathing normally. Let's click that one, sounds good. C, moving. To, no, never move anyone unnecessarily. Check to make sure they're breathing normally. If the area is safe, that's a fairy test question as well. If the area is safe, what do you do? Leave them where they are, because moving someone unnecessarily can cause them more harm than good that you can't see internally. The fluid level in your battery is low. What fluid should you use to top it up? So what fluid are you using to top up your battery? My email is info at the channel name, drivingtheoryuk.com. So that's info at drivingtheoryuk.com. What I'll do is I'll put the email address in the description. Once YouTube does what it's got to do in terms of uploading this, I'll go back in and I'll put it in, I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll put it in the pinned comment. So this live today, 13th, for all of you, if you want to email me about the um, live training, if you like, or video training, um, I'll put it in the description as a pinned comment and then just email me your details and we can take it from there. But I said there's a video coming out this week, Thursday. If I can edit in time, I'll do it for Thursday. If not, it's going to be Friday and it just explains a bit more in terms of what's what. And it shows you the software that I'm going to be using and how it looks on screen and everything else. So if you want to wait for the video on Thursday or Friday when it drops, um, again, the link will be in that video description and the Discord link will be in that video description. Sorry, what are we on 18? All right, first one, um, D. Yeah, again, most of you are going for... Oh, someone's going for A. Amos. Safety. Battery acid. You know what people do with acid that can't be safe in any shape or form. So it's not going to be acid. Again, you've gone for A, it's never going to be acid. Acid is not safe in any shape or form. It's going to be D, um, distilled water. And there's another part of that question is how high should you fill it up? And it's just above the cell plate if that question comes up. You're in the left-hand lane, make sure you can see that. You're in the left-hand lane at the traffic lights waiting to turn left. Which signal means you must wait? <coughs> I'll pick it up um, later on this evening. I've got a Zoom call straight after this. I'll pick it up this evening and see what you have to say and I will be in touch. Oh, come through really quick, 19A.
que most of you Again, most of you are going for A's. Oh, some of them have gone for a C, that one. Let me just double check, make sure no one's gone for anything else. Yeah, the easiest way to work this one now, there's no green in A. So that one, everyone's going to have to wait on that one. So it makes no difference. Green, green, green means go. So the easiest one to work at, it says you're in the left-hand lane at traffic lights so wait and turn left, which signal means you must wait. Everybody's got to wait for A. So that's how the easiest way to work that one out. You're at front, you're at the front of a queue of traffic waiting to turn right into a side road. Why is it important to check your right mirror just before turning? It's a mouthful. Um, well, some of your 19s are just coming through. Some of you are going for 19A, 19D, A, 19B, and D. Well, let's see if the, what's the 20 come through. 20, first one out, Annabelle. 20C. Hmm. A. A, C, it looks like you guys are split on this one, it's A's and C's. Ooh. Yeah, most of you got A's and C's. What's the question here? The front of the queue traffic waits to turn right. So you're turning right into a side road. Why is it important to check? A, to check for overtaking vehicles. That's a possible to make sure the side road's clear. No, to look for. Was it A's and C's? For those of you who gone to the C, to look for pedestrians about to cross, and let me just read the question again. For those of you just gone for C, you need to break it down and see if your answer makes sense as well. You had the front of a queue, so you had the front of the queue of traffic waiting to turn right into a side road. So you had the front turning right. Why is it important to check your right mirror just before turning? Your answer is to look for pedestrians about to cross. If you're looking in the mirror, the mirror shows you behind. If they're crossing behind your car, it doesn't matter to you. It's pedestrians crossing in front of you that you've got to worry about. So looking in your mirror doesn't affect you in any shape or form if pedestrians are behind you crossing. That's the reason why that answer makes no sense. So sometimes when you are doing your theory test and you read the question, you click your answer, there's nothing wrong with going back to see if your answer makes sense with the question. Double check it as well. But it's checking for overtaking vehicles, mainly motorbikes, because they can weave in and out of traffic. That's the reason why that is what it is. So hopefully you guys got some benefit from that. Oh, let me come out of that one and go to this one. Sorry, guys, hold on one sec. On my mock test, I'm getting 47 to 50. Has a 57, 63. Is that okay, you think? And my test is Friday. You are passing the mock test, you are passing the hazard perception. So you've got to give yourself, first of all, a pat on the back, congratulations, if you're passing on a regular basis. But remember, you're going for the, when you go for the real test, the questions will be worded slightly differently and you're gonna be nervous. So are you ready for a test based on your mock test results? If that's consistent, yes. 
Will you pass it? That's then to you and your nerves and how much you're really understanding it. But all you can do is pass what's in front of you and that's what you're doing at the moment. So for Hana, I wish you luck next Friday if I don't see you next Monday. Um, thank you guys. Since doesn't send any more questions on that. So those of you that's got a test coming up, especially practical tests um, coming up as well. I wish you good luck with that. Let us know how you get on coming back next week. For those of you studying for the theory side, keep studying. Thank you, Grace. Appreciate that. Same to you. Um, no problem, Portia. Yeah, so for those of you who've got a test, I wish you luck with that. Let us know how it's, um, it's going. For those of you that are still studying, remember, understand the questions, understand the answers. If you guys aren't in Discord, jump in Discord and get some help from there. Hopefully that goes well for you next week. Um, and remember what I've said, if you guys are looking for coaching help and you're willing to be filmed, drop me an email because I want to help as many of you guys as possible and use you guys as inspiration and motivation for other people. So don't be afraid to drop me an email with the bits and pieces in there. The video will drop next this week. Hopefully, yes, you will get it. Hopefully, where well, you've done it now, so you know how it feels in there. Hopefully, the nerves don't get the better of you this time. You're more than capable of passing it based on your answers last week. So go and get your pass certificate. Let us know how it goes. Um, yeah, sorry, for those of you that um, jump in Discord, get some help, send a message in Discord. But like I said, if you are don't want to go in Discord, it's not a problem, but don't be afraid to reach out for help, whether it's via comments on YouTube or sending me an email. I want as many of you to pass next year onwards. So I'm going to say thank you very much. I will pull it in this description. Once YouTube does what they've got to do, I'll go back and edit the description and put it in the description. I'll also leave it as a pinned comment. But if you watch some of the other videos back, I'm going to the description, it's in there as well. But I will do it this evening on this particular video. I need a special chair for my test with they to provide. They won't provide a special chair without knowing they, you need that. So it's something that you need to contact the DVSA about. Explain your situation and they will accommodate you um, in the same arena where everyone else is or give you a private room with that special chair. But you need to let them know, otherwise they can't give you something they don't know nothing about. All right, guys, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day and week. Okay, good luck for those of you who got a test this week.